Oh, here we go. Smooth voice. Sarah is in the house. What's going on, bud? How are you? It's been forever. It's been so long. It's so good to hear your voice and see your face. Oh my God. Same. I know when we were talking and I was like, F yes. I just, it's so good to see your face, to have a hang, to have a catch up. Um, I love when I get to you and tired. Do it because I am exhausted. You don't yeah. look tired, but your voice sounds like you've been put through it. How was the last probably couple months for you leading up to this? Bro, like starting with Rumble on, it's been nonstop. And then this this last week, week and a half is it was a marathon, like oh an absolute God. marathon. You know, I, I contemplating sleeping under my, <laughs> underneath my, my workstation. Instead of I going bet. To there was one, there was one day where I was like, I should sleep underneath my table. Cause if I go to my room, I'm going to sleep longer than I want to. Cause I only right. want to take a two hour nap. And I went to my room. I ended up getting a three and a half hours. So I was like, damn yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You're down and out. Yeah. Once you hmm. get like in that room and the, the, the blinds are all shut and it's nice and warm. It's, oh my God. As like somebody that's constantly sleep deprived, that sounds luxurious there was Ooh. there was one point where me and terry and our new uh seamstress jolene we were all gluing crystals at the same time and the fumes from the crystals were just it was like filling up that room we were all i and we were all getting high and like wait what do headaches. you mean what do the crystals do what do you what do you mean so we use the, okay so these wrestlers gears when you see them sparkle mm -hmm. it's because they have like crystal rhinestones on there not just not just like regular crystals. Those are, those are like all Swarovski. Holy shit! How much like, does that? How much does that cost? A good amount. A good amount, <laughs> a good amount for, for, that you okay, don't for, want to. Okay. For okay so for I, I won't give you a price, but just for example, Seth Rollins's gear had about. Okay, so wait. Oh, so one gross of crystals is one hundred and forty-four crystals. He had about twenty-one gross of crystals. Holy shit. Yeah. And that's how, yeah. how long does that take you to put on? And why are you getting high from the fumes of these crystals? What happens to them that? Well, so it's not necessarily the crystals. It's the, it's the, the glue that we use. Got it. Put the crystals out. Cause you can't just use like, uh, if you try, try to use a heat setter, like the, uh, the little tool and you use the hot fix ones, it takes forever. So doing it with glue goes faster, but you're just in golf. So they always say, you know, do it in a well ventilated area. Yeah. But yeah, not we with were, like several other people it, all doing the same thing. It was nutty. Like, and if, if, to think like if Seth has that many on his outfit, just imagine what Natty has. I was going to say Natty's, Natty's must be insane. Yeah, yeah. And like, oh my God, I, what, what a gig. And I mean, that is the big thing, of course. It's like, yes. I mean, I don't know if I'm just speaking on my behalf. It's like, yes, I look forward to the matches. Of course, there's the storytelling. It's beautiful. It's great. It's the art that we all love. Yeah. But the but the gear, yeah, the gear is so end all be all. Um, and you did kind of everyone's gear. Who like I, I was looking at a tweet earlier. Who all did you cover for WrestleMania for gear? So uh I did Sasha, I made Seth's gear, Jolene made his kick pads, and his stylist Troy uh grabbed his jacket. Um I did uh I did most of Logan Paul's stuff. Mm. Um, uh, Jolene did his kick pads and uh, Miz's uh, designer, Z he, he uses Zygmunt out of, I think, Serbia. Okay. He made the jacket. And then I also did, uh, I did a bunch of stuff for Johnny Knoxville, which we were running around and doing. Um, I forget who else. I honestly, it's just, it's, it's such a world when it's all blending in together. Like I, I don't, I did Rhonda. I, yeah. I did yeah. Rhonda's. Yeah. Um, just a big, like a big assortment, all different types of looks. And then we had all, a lot of last minute stuff. Like I had to, I had to make a thong for Chris Pontius. <laughs> and then we had to, we had to turn did a pair you have of, to like fit him for this thong or like, how did that happen? So it was just like, they're like, okay, so we want a thong, but not a, a totally a thong. Yeah. And so okay. we, I just, you know, we just looked at it. Okay, we got to need this about this much cheek showing, whatnot. So like, okay, I got you. And then uh, we had a helper named Jen. She turned a pair of regular Adidas sweatpants into tearaway pants. Oh, Imagine, great! This is, this is all happening, you know, five hours before showtime. Oh my you god! Know? So I'm sitting there, you know, I'm sitting there trying to finish Sasha while 
all this stuff is getting tossed our way. I'm running down to the locker rooms to, you know, do fittings and things like that, coming back. And next thing you know, another thing pops, another thing pops up. Oh, you know, no. sometimes, sometimes people's gear that they ordered uh, in advance doesn't show up and you got to scramble and figure out what to do next. Oh which my God. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put out names because I don't know, but <laughs> it, it did happen uh, a couple of times. This mania or like through your duration, this mania it did. This oh mania. my gosh. I won't say because like, again, like as, as, as a fan watching, you don't know what they were going for. You just know what you got. Sure. And if you loved it, you loved it. But yeah. That's, we, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. I can, I can respect that. Was there anything that you didn't get done? I imagine your list is insane. And when it comes down to the wire and stuff's thrown to you last minute, there must be certain things that occasionally you're like this one thing just can't get done. And we're going to have to do without, or we're going to have to improvise with something else. Uh, I don't think there was necessarily anything that didn't get done. Just, you know, again, some people stuff didn't show up. So we had to improvise and try to see what we could do. And you mm -hmm. can only get so much done in that amount of time before they have to get dressed and then go do rehearsals and all this stuff and just get ready, get in a gorilla position. So, you know, there's a lot more, if you had the time, you would do a lot more to certain things, but yeah. it's just, you can only do what you can do. God, that's got to be pretty tense when you're working with somebody who like had something, one thing in mind that they ordered, that they paid for, that they were waiting down to the wire. And then that thing doesn't happen. And mania is mania. So when you don't have the thing that you want, you're probably a little bit heartbroken. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, what are we going to do instead? Like you must be dealing with uh, a lot of different emotions throughout lot, the day. A, a lot of, yeah, a lot of broken hearts. It's, it happens more often than not. It happened last year. It happened this yeah. year. And like, I, the thing I try to remind some of the wrestlers when that happens is like, yeah, I, I understand the idea of you had this vision in your head of you walking out wearing the specific thing. And when you wore it and you did the crowd sees you, they're going to react a certain way. But like, again, the audience doesn't know what you were planning. They just know right. what you gave them. So yeah. though it might not be what you wanted, that doesn't make it bad. Yeah, of so, course. No, I, absolutely. You got to remember that. Yeah. I mean, it's like anything. It's like, I mean, even just with the show in general, you have one thing in mind and things change, matches get cut or somebody gets injured or who knows, things just yeah. change and you got to roll with it. You exactly. have to throw expectations out the window that it just doesn't exist. Yeah, it's, it's roll a with very, it. it's a very just, you know, it's, it's a shotgun environment. Uh -huh. And you got to be able to, to, to move with the, with the flow. Otherwise, it, you can get overwhelmed very easily. How different is it working with guys like a Logan Paul, like the Jackass crew, like guys that are coming into our world? Like when you're working with a Seth, obviously with Sasha, uh, with Rhonda, when you're working with people that have worked with you before, that have had gear before, when you're working with people that have not even had wrestling gear before, what is that process like? Well, so like, you know, you just got to remember that some of these celebrities, when they come in, they're coming in, they're coming in with a team. So like you would think that one person's making the decision, but you know, they're, they're catering to a brand. So yeah. you have a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. What I will say is, you know, initially when we talked to Logan Paul and we asked him like what he had in mind, he was like, cause I, I want to go full on, full on wrestler. Oh like, yeah. And he, he wanted to match did. the Miz. He wanted to match the Miz. So initially we were going, Oh, well, you want to match the Miz. Okay. So we're doing Logan Paul version of the Miz trunks. He was going to go out in trunks you know, kick pads, sparkly. Uh -huh. And then, you know, as things moved along with his, uh, with his team and, you know, just catering to that brand, it changed up and we ended up going with the long tights, which ultimately I thought looked awesome. Cause it's it still, looks great. Yeah, it felt like him. Yeah. It, it was great. God, that's every, so funny to person. imagine him having like a whole team making those decisions. Like I, yeah. I would love to know like what those conversations are for I mean, I'll say like outsiders of the wrestling business. I mean, he did a hell of a job. I would feel like he could easily hang in that wrestling world, but for him to step in there and them to be like, trunks aren't for you. We're going to do long tights. Like I would love to know how they figure out what works and what is that Logan Paul brand. Yeah, in I, I, I don't know what the conversations were had that went from, okay, let's go from trunks to, to long tights. Mm -hmm. But ultimately like, uh, I know all these people are people that they make the decisions for his brand and he, yeah. he trusts them. And so far, if you look at him, it, it, he's, his brand is growing exponentially. So, so far, so good. Right. So yeah, so <laughs> yeah. Put trust in them. They put trust in us. Yeah. And I, I kid you not, he was walking around people when he posted that picture on mm -hmm. stage and everybody oh, yeah. came up to me, they were like, yo, is that, 
did, did y'all do that? Like, cause that was like, everybody was like, that was crazy. They never expected him to look like that. He looks like a damn action hero. It was awesome. 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, it was like exceptional. Yeah, I think everybody collectively, the internet was like, oh, this is what we're getting from Logan Paul. Like not only has he been leaning in and I mean, I feel like the buildup to their match was a little bit like, what are we going to get from Logan Paul in the ring? We didn't get too much of a taste of that going into it. Uh, but then, yeah, seeing him lean in with the gear and then, man, they had such a great match. Um, yeah. I, mean, I remember, I remember seeing years. him like doing his segments at raw and stuff like that. And I'd be watching on the screen and like, I was, yeah, again, I wasn't sure what to expect from Logan, but mm-hmm. I'd see him do stuff in the ring. I'm like, Oh, his facials are good. Oh, yeah. he's got, he's got really good. Like in ring. Yeah. So then when he came back and he said he wanted to go full wrestling, I was like, all right, let's go. go. Like, this kid I is got you. Let's, let's, let's do this. I'm yeah. not going to make you look bad. So let's oh, do it. I love that. So cool. Um, let's talk about sexy Seth because we went full lace. Oh my God. So when he came out, I'm like, wait, is Seth wearing lingerie? He's got on the lace. I can see the thighs. I yeah. thought it was so cool. No one does that. Why don't I, we never even see women doing that. And it looked so damn cool. How did you find the right lace to find that right look to pull that off? Right. So if one it might be like him and Sasha are battling for my favorite set, <laughs> but I remember right after rumble, he came walking back and I went to him and this, this was my pitch to him. I was like, Seth, I have this idea at mania. When you walk out, I want people to say, the hell is he wearing a wedding dress? Like, That's what I want. And he was like, okay, I see where you're going. So we started yeah. talking and things changed. We were originally going to do white lace, but we ended up changing it to black because of, you know, you know, obviously who he was working. Sure. And so, uh, yeah, it just, it just evolved. And I was like, Hey, yeah, so I want to do lace, but like, I actually want to have some leg exposed. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. And he's, he was game for everything. So cool. Yeah. I, I love that. He was, I love this version of Seth that just keeps pushing the boundaries. Like the suit he came out on, on raw, I was like, okay, pink yeah. Chelsea boot, excuse you. Yeah, I love with, it. With the, with the tuck stripe on the side, I was like, man, that looks so like that pale pink looks so good on him. Him and Freebird, baby, just yeah, out I, I there can't. rocking that pale pink. I love the fact that he just allows me to be like, all right, just, just stretch your creativity. That's yeah. It. Yeah. So like, I, again, when I was like trying to land on looks for the, uh, for that whole mania thing, I was like, okay, we're doing lace, we're doing all this stuff. So I started looking stuff up and then I just held a picture in front of him. It was a picture of Prince. I said, Hell yeah. that's what we're going for. He goes, all right, I'm game. I'm game. Let's go. Love that. Yeah. That's so cool. Who was it, the it, person? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, originally, like, so well, as the story was going and we, at first we didn't, we thought Seth wasn't going to have a match. Mm-hmm. at Mania, oh, yeah. so, we, so we were going to do all black, like black under the lace and stuff like that. Cause we were like, okay, the idea is like, you're walking into WrestleMania, like morning, your 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 lost opportunity hold on give me a second yeah and then so then after that like oh we were like oh no no no. we're we're actually he's gonna know he's gonna have a match all right all right so let's start adding some colors that's when we went with the turquoise and started adding all that stuff in there oh i love that like thought goes into it to that level of yeah i mean that yeah i mean that's a really good point your gear would be different knowing you had a match or not yeah, exactly. Good foresight. You, you know what you're doing, Surat. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's you, you're still telling a story. We're still telling a yes. story. Yes, yeah. If I, if I can add a little bit in there so that the story can, it gets conveyed a little easier without Seth having to do too much talking, mm-hmm. then there we go. That's that, that's all that matters. Who is the most collaborative when it comes to doing gear? Huh. I don't know. Everybody's got their own their own, like, process some people are they come in with their own ideas like this is mm-hmm. what this is what they want and i i, I appreciate that because sometimes that just takes a lot of the the thinking out of my head okay i'm just mm-hmm. recreating what you got um right. other times it's you know someone just says hey like you've been doing my gear for so long i trust your judgment so let's go game on yeah, yeah. like I know, I- like sasha wanted to look extra sexy this year and she wanted to specifically she said she wanted cutouts so i just started playing with that idea and just you know, trying to figure it out. Yeah, I will say I do thoroughly enjoy this sexy nature of Sasha that she is bringing to the ring. I've definitely, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only person to take note of this, but it's like, okay, girl, it looks great. Um, Where do you, where does like designer Surratt step into a, a combine with husband Surratt when it comes to doing Sasha's gear? 
Uh, it's just it's a matter of I I just I guess I understand what it's like to be a wrestler and to yeah. want to walk in you know feeling a certain way and at the exactly. end of the day that's Sasha Banks that's not Mercedes yeah so you're just trying to convey her her strength and her bossiness in a sexy way yeah and then also you know you're elevating it from from years past you know so like I I was ta- talking to one of the ladies this past weekend I said you know some girls. They approach things thinking, I just need to sparkle. Like, mm-hmm. I need to sparkle. If I sparkle, then it's going to look great. And then at the yeah. end of the day, it's not necessarily always about the sparkle. Sometimes it's just, it's changing your look drastically from one end to the other. It can be the plainest gear possible. But if it's a drastic change, then it conveys a whole other side of you. How do you do change? Like, what goes into changing somebody's gear? And tr- like, I mean, you look at somebody like John, for example, who is so bare bones for the most part all the time. I mean, he went from the shield gear to then the Dean Ambrose gear that was just like the white, white, the white tank top and the jeans uh, into like, you know, he's got like the camo pants and whatnot now. But like he like I, I can't imagine a world where he's in like true wrestling gear. How would you get him from where he is to um, to like something like what Cody wears to in like that traditional wrestling gear. I think it would, I think, especially in John's case, it would have to be, you know, it would have to be driven by the story. What's, what's the point of the story he's trying to get across because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to put someone into wrestling gear when they're getting ready for say a death match. Like why would you even think to go that direction? Right. Whereas and on the same token, you could have someone walking into a death match, but their whole stance is I am a wrestler. That's what I do. Like I when Matt care. Cardona did it. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, no, I'm going to go in there with my tights because I am a true professional wrestler. So that's what, right. that's my uniform. You know? Right. I think, huh. uh, I think when you're trying to elevate or change a person's look, it's just a matter of like, at the end of the day, it has to still feel like that person. You can't just go out of the box just for the sake of, because if it looks like it doesn't fit him, then he's, he's now he's just a guy wearing a costume. Yeah, I know. And it really is such a delicate balance of it going along with where that person is in their career to what the match is, all of those details, like they really all come together. Uh, I mean, think of how jarring it was for everybody to see uh, Elias Ezekiel show up on Monday Night Raw. And it's like, wait, you're in trunks, you're shaved, your hair's cut. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, it threw me. I literally, I left the room for a second. I went to the kitchen to get something. I came back and I was like, who's this? It legit took me a second to figure out who I was looking at. Did you, did you see the meme that's online? Of him and LA Knight? No, of, of him. And I think it's the, that like the, the short king from Shrek. <laughs> he looks exactly <laughs> like I started crying. I was like, holy oh my god oh my god so cool. and like there's a there's a shot of him walking to the ring like, you know he's got his shaved legs <laughs> his the shaved trunk. legs killed me but he only shaved down to about the knee so you see the hair popping up from the boots it's amazing i was like what i don't and know if he that was didn't tan the back of his thighs <laughs> Elias killing me <laughs> oh, it's so good. i do when they said hey you're not elias you're ezekiel, you're ezekiel. Elias is younger brother. i was like holy that's that, I, it made me laugh so much i'm like that's oh my god just run with it just take that idea and run with it well you do know? you remember when there was that split second that braun Strowman was like brain Strowman or something like weren't they like they like, put glasses on and he looked like he was one of the dudleys I think so. I think, I don't know. It was a very small window, very, very small window that that happened. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was short lived. Yeah. I I mean, I I love, I love when people get to, you know, uh, just, it's it's pro wrestling. It's wacky ideas. We had the undertaker who's completely, you know, that's, he's, he's like, he's an absolute legend, Mm -hmm. like a godfather in the game. But at the end of the day, he's a dead guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Took that idea and just ran with it. Like sometimes, yeah. sometimes ideas are just so off the wall and you can take it and run with it. Like you can unlock magic. And you look at somebody like the undertaker who had like the gray and the black and the purple and these different variations. Then he was biker taker. Like American there's badass. the American badass. Like there's, 
there's all these different variations. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it really is such a story for some of these gear. And that is one of the cool things during WrestleMania with access as well as when you can walk around and you see people's gear in some of those moments because uh, the, the gear becomes iconic in itself. Yeah. Uh, you think of stuff that Trish has worn. You think of like Lita with the thong sticking out, like these things that, you know, you'll always come back to I me mean, uh, having um, Dominic Mysterio wear that Eddie Guerrero uh, homage oh, gear, like dude. amazing. Yeah. Like the gringo. I, so, so Ray was telling me earlier, like he told me like, oh yeah, like his, his gear maker Hayashi, who's been making Ray's gear for 25 years and is now making doms. He goes, oh, he killed it with his gear. And like, they walked out and I saw Dom in the Gringos Locos gear. I jumped out of my seat. I was yeah. like, oh, Gringos Locos. And I started running around the room. <laughs> like I still get, it still boggles my mind that like people will reach into the depths of like history in a way mm -hmm. that I, I didn't even comprehend or think of. Yeah, no, it, it's so cool. Uh, for you being a wrestling fan, you love wrestling. You were a wrestler. How much of that plays a role in, in you being so good at your job? I think uh, one of the, I think one of the best compliments I got was when AJ first got there and I started, I, I had started doing AJ's gear for a while and I made him a pair of tights. He goes, dude, this is like the, one of the best pair of tights I've, I've ever had. Like it fits perfectly. And then like, you know, Miz got his gear from uh, Jolene uh, mm -hmm. for this mania and he was walked in. He goes, best fitting gear I've ever had. That's I think awesome. being a wrestler, like, I just, I understand that, like, you know, the way gear shifts in the ring, the way it moves that like, you gotta, I don't like things to be overly tight and squeezing them in. I like it to just, you know, flex just enough. Yeah. And one, so with Logan, one of the, uh, one of the notes that we got from his team was like, they wanted it tight, but not super tight. If that makes I sense. Love no, I, I mean, listen, as a woman that wears a tights often, I do get it. There's a difference yeah. of like, like I will always just be a basic bitch and love me some Lululemon tights. They are the exact amount of tightness that I want, the amount of compression that I want. And it's funny because recently um, I was, I, I, all these like ads pop up on like Instagram or whatever. And it's like these Lululemon dupes off of Amazon. I was like, I'm going to give these a shot. Let's just see what happens. And you get them and you're like, okay, I get it. But like, it's still not quite the right thing. It's yeah. close, but it's not right there. So I, I do understand that that minuscule difference between yeah. uh, levels of tightness and what, what you want around your body and to be able to move in it, especially working yeah, I, out. I think with Logan, like the whole, the whole, I, the whole gist I got was they wanted to be a, like a, a, the in between, between pants and tights. Mm -hmm. So we made it with just like, we cut everything right to his measurements so that they would be tight. But then when he moved, you know, it would flex a little bit. And then we use a vinyl on there because with, the fabric cut to that length and it, be, it being vinyl when he moved you get the creases so yeah. that would look more like pants than it would tights where if you just use spandex it would just flow with the body right God, so little things like that just knowing about. what fabrics to use and things like that just to to get the the right look across yeah all right let's get into some of your wrestling career what drew you to wrestling I don't I don't think that we touched on it too much when we had you on before I also we don't have a lot of repeat customers on the show so welcome back by the way <laughs> i'm glad to be back like this is, like this is my only back. time i get to talk to you besides sending otter videos on instagram <laughs> <laughs> i know bulldog videos otter videos which i saw a great one today that i meant to tag you in um i'm gonna have to go back and find it i, I was like in the middle of uh, like mom duty and i was like must send this to surat um yeah. but uh okay let's get into you as a wrestler what drew you to wrestling? What was your first experience of, of falling in love with professional wrestling? So growing up, I was that kid who was like, you know, running up walls and doing backflips and like just trying to do you know, all kinds of crazy stuff to where everybody in school would always tell me like, yo, you should go to Hollywood and be a stuntman. Yeah. So, and so like, that's just my personality. And then I was watching, like I would see wrestling and I was just, I was enamored by it because it was the good guy versus the bad guy. I'm, I love superheroes. So it all felt just like that. And it was just something I loved growing up, but it wasn't until I first saw like Rey Mysterio because he like, it just felt like him, Rey Mysterio in his Spider-Man outfit, like that spoke to me. I mm -hmm. love comic books. I yeah. love action. I love flips. He's doing all that. He's short. I'm short. You mean I can do this? Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I was like, oh, this is actually something that I, I can go do 
and B. And, you know, and because of that, like when he first came back from uh, to WWE in the Royal Rumble, you know, I just started talking to him again and, you know, just building a rapport. And next thing you know, he gifts me with the mask that he debuted in. Shut came back in. up. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's Prize insane. No, Surprise I know. It's like today. literally in a case as it should be. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. That Ray, Ray's just the best. What a sweet he, man. He oh, is my like God. The nicest. He's the nicest person in the world. And Dom is just as nice, mm-hmm. like great human beings. Yeah. But yeah. Like it just it, everything about wrestling spoke to everything I love to do just the physicality the theatricality so when i uh was 17 i was still in high school and i signed up for a wrestling school who actually the person that drove me to my first wrestling school uh, class because i needed a ride was smart mark from uh from uh from the major wrestling podcast from Stop. aw yeah. oh my god I've known, yeah we've known each other since high school and he, the reason why he's into wrestling is because he drove me to my first class and then they were like oh yeah you want to hop in he goes yeah sure so he hopped oh, in oh my me. god we started together we won our first tag belts together in 2001 but yeah wow that's yeah. crazy that's yeah. so Small cool world. um so you're did you and sasha initially meet through wrestling before you were in ww you guys have been together for some time yeah i uh i was wrestling for chaotic wrestling out in you know, boston back in the day uh, back when i was like just doing roh and stuff like that yeah and around 2010 uh she was training at chaotic and we would just run and cross paths at shows and it was it was it wasn't until i was walking by one day she was talking to someone else and i heard her mention korean movies uh-huh. and in my head Here i was like who's it yeah, I was like, hey, Puerto Rican girl it. that likes Korean movies. That's what I thought. I had no idea she was like, you know, who yeah. she was related to, all this different stuff. Sure. But then, yeah, I just started talking and figured out we had a lot in common. And it just it snowballed from there. Sure did. It sure yeah. did snowball. Um, what was your first date like? Um, I don't know if it was considered a date, but we, uh, uh, she met one day. I, so I used to work overnights uh, in the ice cream factory. You know, one ice morning. cream factory what a f- job that is yeah, i worked third shift making ice cream for a living for a decade <laughs> oh my god what yeah. 2000 like from 2003 to 2012 when we moved to florida i was working at ice cream factory listen we're going to circle back to the dating thing in one quick second let's yeah. stay on the ice cream right now because i know that you are a food lover i know that you are a hell of a you get to business in the kitchen mm-hmm. Did Mm -hmm. you ever concoct some wacky flavors? What kind of things did you do working in ice cream for a decade? All right. So uh, I didn't really concoct any like crazy flavors, but I'm not going to say the company name. Those who know me know what company I worked for. But there was one time I pitched this idea for a a s'mores ice cream and it was called Campfire S'mores Ice Cream. Uh And like they kind of just brushed it off, whatever. And then like a year and a half later, all of a sudden they had a s'mores ice cream and I was like, Hmm, what's going on? What and then, the? And then also like, so on the tail end of my time there, probably like 2010, 2011, I was pitching to them like, Hey, we need to do a, a, a protein heavy ice cream, like mm. no lactose high in protein. Cause that's going to be the rage. And it yes. kind of just fell on deaf ears. They just kept going towards like low fat, half the fat. And then like, a year or two later, all you saw was the the halo ice cream, mm-hmm. the, all the soy ice cream that was like yeah. high in protein. And I was like, we could have we could have had that. That could have been their market. Yeah. Oh, so. my gosh. OK, who makes the what's your favorite ice cream? Who is your favorite ice cream brand? You have brand loyalty. Uh, so my favorite ice cream, I don't have a specific brand. My favorite ice cream like forever is going to be Friendly's cookies and cream ice cream. I've never had this. What's never, Friendly's? Well, Friendly's is a is an East Coast brand. It's, okay. It's all on the East Coast. They have restaurants. And uh, there's probably, there's one restaurant in Florida. They close a lot of restaurants now, but you'll find like their, their ice creams in like Stop and Shop or some certain stores. You'll find their ice cream cakes. They're, they used to have this Jubilee roll that would come out every Christmas. And like... Mm. That was that's that was a staple in New England, uh, you know, households during the holidays. A uh, nice jubilee roll. Oh my God! Have you ever had Jenny's ice cream? No, what's Jenny's ice cream? So Jenny's Jenny's I'm obsessed with. They are fantastic, and so they do new lines 
pretty often, but I connected with them when they did a line with Dolly Parton and me being like an avid Dolly Parton fan. They're like, can we send yeah. you some of this? I was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> um, so they send me their ice cream, but now they keep sending them and they do different lines. They have like the, you know, they do like a summertime line with like different popsicle flavors. Um, during the holidays, they had like cognac and butterscotch and coffee with sugar and cream, like these amazing, beautiful ice creams. Um, but they're actually based out of Columbus, which I didn't know until I moved here. And I was like, oh shit, you can get Jenny's like kind of everywhere here. Yeah. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, I'm also in a group chat with, um, with Josh Gallegos, Becky, yeah. Seth, Josh's girlfriend that is merely dedicated to ice cream. Is it like um, salt and straw? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they've, they've always told me about it. I've just never like had a chance to go. Everybody, everybody raves about it, especially being in Orlando. Like unless I'm buying it at the store, there's not, there's actually not a lot of like ice cream options in Orlando. Right. Right. But, but I have fallen in love with Jeremiah's Italian ice. Okay. It's like this, it's a soft serve swirl okay. with like Italian ice and it is cracked. Like literally I've had it enough times <laughs> where I'd go there, I'd order and I'm like, you know what? I need to franchise one of these places and put it in like <laughs> Texas or some shit. Yes. Like, I actually think that a lot when I'm somewhere, I'm like, we should franchise a Tim Hortons here. John wants to franchise Skylines everywhere. We happen to be in Cincinnati now, so we certainly don't have to. But when we were in Vegas, that was a thing. He's like, well, there should be, we should do like a Skyline Tim Hortons franchise combination. Well, like, like Long John trailer. Silver and Pizza Hut? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Lovers of ice cream. I actually like, I've always had like a full savory palate until I got pregnant. And now I just, I still have a sweet tooth. Um, ice, cream, ice cream is my favorite dessert. Like if I'm ordering dessert at a restaurant, if it comes a la mode, then yeah. I'm going to order that. Like, cause it's, you know, it's got the vanilla bean. Oh my so, God. I yeah. do. I do. Our, our freezer, I'll send you a picture after this. Our freezer looks like, I mean, we do have a child that lives here. It looks like we run a preschool with how much ice cream we have in our freezer. It's comical. It's I, bad. I try to keep it out of my freezer just because I know I'll eat it all. Like in one sitting, I know I'll eat it all. So I try to keep it out, but. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, my brother was in town and like, I had to leave to Saudi Arabia. Mm. And like, so I was gone and uh, Mercedes was gone. So he was at our place by himself. And then when we get, when I get back, I just see all this Klondike bars <laughs> in my freezer. I'm like, damn it. And then in two days, the rest of it was gone. I was like, man, listen. Can't be trusted. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's deadly. Yeah. Um, okay, back to the love and relationship. So the first date that you say wasn't really a first date. Um, so, yeah, so when did, when did was, the romance happen? When did you get out of the friend zone? I don't I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I think it just kind of just grew over time. Like I I just remember that first date, like I, again, I was working, I was home from work at seven in the morning. And I just, it's one of those days where I happened to not go to bed when I got home. Mm -hmm. And then I was talking with her on AIM. Oh, hell yeah. Those, yeah, that's, that's, that's that where everyone there. got fresh. That's yeah. where all <laughs> dreams came true. <laughs> and then I was just, yeah, I was just like, Hey, uh, I, I feel like going to Chinatown in Boston. You want to meet me there? And she was like, yeah. So I drove to Boston. We met up in Chinatown. We just walked around, looked at Korean movies, hung out. Uh, we got boba tea. I got her her first bowl of pho. And oh, that was it. That was history was made. That's that. I don't think, yeah. It never felt like a, Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like woo this girl. It was just right. kind of something that just blossomed over time. Oh, uh, yeah. John and I were kind of similar to that too. Like we, I mean, yes. And no, like we spent so much time talking. And then the first time we actually, cause I was like, we were talking so much that I was like, either we're just best friends or someone's got to pull the trigger here. And then the first time we yeah. like actually hung out, hung out, we like stayed up just talking until like four in the morning, like sitting on opposite couches, just like nerds in a room yeah. hanging out. And it was like, someone better make a move here or uh, <laughs> we'll just come up with a secret handshake, I guess. Yeah. He made I, mean, yeah it's, I mean, that, I mean, I think, I think the best relationships are born from friendships. Like Agreed. you can't, you, you got to be friends with the person because if you don't, if you can't do friend things with them, how are you going to do marriage stuff with them? It's 100%. Not you have to have someone you can just like hang out with. You, you like, it's one thing to be able to like hang out in romantic situations and also still to like keep that aspect of a relationship alive for sure. But also yeah. like when you're just, yeah, you want someone you're just like living life with. Not everything is uh, the notebook all the time. Yeah. You want to just be able to like shoot the shit, hang out yeah. and just like purely enjoy each other's company. 
Yeah, I feel like you need to you need to find someone who just you just enjoy their company. You just enjoy yeah. being around them, but at the same time that they make you want to make the effort to be like, I want to yeah. I want to do something that makes everybody impressed by you. Yeah. That makes sense. Like I want to yeah. I want to I want I want to get dressed up and look real nice for you. Yeah, I at like that. At the same that. time, I just want to, you know, sit in the backyard and, you know, put the fire pit on and go. That is my favorite thing since we've moved to Cincinnati. That's all we've been doing. It's like having little fire pits and we just get to hang out outside and have on some music. It's, it's just the best. Those are like my favorite kind of hangouts where you're not really doing much of anything together, but just hanging out. But do you guys explore the food scene in Cincinnati? Cause there's some good stuff there. There's some great stuff here and we have not yet, but our anniversary is on Saturday and we're going out to this really cool looking Italian restaurant. So it, it's, we're now in that mode. Now that Nora's a little bit older too, I'm like, we got to start like at least a couple times a month, go out, go be Renee and John, not just yeah. mom and dad. And like, let's do, we got to do that. Cause yeah, yeah. it's hard. You get, you know, you've getting like mom and dad mode. The baby goes to bed so early. We're like, ah, all right, she's sleeping. We'll either watch the show we're watching or go outside and hang with the dogs and just sit and have like a little bonfire or something, which is great. But yeah, it's, I need to put on an outfit because I'm constantly in sweats and I need to remind not only him, but like mostly myself yeah. that a bitch can still throw down. Never yeah. forget coming I'm, in I'm, hot. I'm, I'm big on effort. I just, I, for me, like if I feel like someone is not just like, you know, not just relationships, but just friends in general, if, mm-hmm. if someone is worth the effort for, for me to make, yeah. then that's, that to me, that means something. Agreed. Like, you know, like I will, I will go out of my way for my friends all day long. If I feel like, you know, your, our relationship, or our bond is worth the effort. And everything is an effort too. It's like, I, I always hate those like memes or whatever. It's like, everything should just be easy. And if it doesn't feel easy, maybe it's not the right thing for you. Like that things are hard sometimes. And yeah. you do have to make an effort sometimes. It's not just, if it's not coming, knocking on your door right away, it doesn't mean that it's not for you or that you can't put in an effort to make something awesome and special. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, everybody, like you see those memes and that's, it, it, it feels like, it makes you feel like life is supposed to be like sunshines and roses. Totally. And it's not like, no, you go life, life is shit. difficult. That's what yeah. makes you, that's what makes you appreciate the easy times. Totally. You know? 100%. I mean, like, again, seeing the wrestlers run out there in their outfits and seeing it sparkle and seeing the crowd's reaction, like that's the easy time. Mm-hmm. The, the last week and a half of literally, two hours of sleep a night going back and forth running around doing everything is is that's the effort that you put in just for those moments and once you see that once you see the appreciation on the fans eyes and the Mm -hmm. wrestlers eyes then it makes it worth it what was the sense of relief that you had or like when did that kick in for you was it after night two of mania was it after raw last night when did you get to finally just like exhale and be like okay i get to go home and we did it we did the thing so technically, yeah, I'm not, I've, I haven't exhaled yet because <laughs> I have a sneaker drop coming soon. Yeah, you do. Other gear to make for people. So like my, the only, the only solace I really got in this, in this time was a short two hour span before raw, where I got to go to Wabi house in Dallas and grab a nice bowl of ramen and just not think about work. That was my, that was my, you know, my breathing time. Is it hard for you to not think about work? So, so the last couple, I mean, I want to say the last couple of weeks, like it was, again, I wasn't getting much sleep to begin with, but the, the little sleep I did get, I, my mind was just racing about people's gear. Mm-hmm. Okay, who do I have to do a meeting with here and there? I got to go do this. I got to, oh, some other project just came up. So now I'm losing sewing time because I got to run out and find fabric and do all these different things. So it's just, yeah, my mind was just constantly on wrestling and gear and stuff so it's it still hasn't exited yet which I don't think it's going to but (laughs) now it's like I have a little more breathing room yeah it's like a hamster on a wheel still thinking about wrestling gear um and to continue thinking about wrestling gear really quickly before we we move on from the wrestling gear talk what is your Mount Rushmore of best gear of all time I I can't yes you can I can't like oh the gear that I made or just in general in general in general okay so my how long I don't want to say Mount Rushmore the ones I just remember 
as a kid, like top tier number one is Rey Mysterio's Spider Man gear, mm-hmm. blue tights, the 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 white stripes in the front with the Spider Man mask and the the webbed uh, kick pads. Um, I want to say Legion of Doom with the spikes, Hell simple yeah. but just it's I don't know they they really just as a kid that really like set my my brain on fire they just look so awesome mm-hmm. um ultimate warrior in yellow tights because i always i always attributed yellow to hogan mm-hmm. so then all of a sudden ultimate warrior came out with the yellow tights one year and i was like oh that's all right i don't know why it just it stuck <laughs> one more uh sasha banks eddie guerrero gear yes because yeah. it was just it was it was a a shot in the dark where i said hey i want you to wear a long tights here and she was so apprehensive yeah so i ended up making which was actually the last time we were in dallas so uh which is WrestleMania huh. 32 and yeah. i made i ended up making her a pair of long tights and a pair of shorts because she wasn't sure what she wanted to do she ended up going with the long tights and then wore the shorts i think the next night on raw but I remember yeah. that. That's yes. Yeah, that's like jogging my memory back to then because I remember her having it and it like being that moment. And I don't know if some, somebody must have put it over on commentary or something. But yeah, I remember that being like a pretty yeah. iconic, cool it was, moment. It, well, because I mean, she made the entrance with Snoop walking out and things like yeah. that. And yeah, it was the first time where I really like. It was like that step out of the box moment. Okay, everybody's yeah. seen you in shorts and a top for all these years. Let's step out of the box, but still be you. Yeah. So that's real. After that, it's like, okay, we can, we can, we can branch out as much as we want, as long as it adheres to who you are, then it's game. Um, one final Sasha question for you. Uh, she just won the, the women's tag team championships at WrestleMania. Yeah. What was that moment for you? Like, to be, I know you're like sitting there at your monitor, soaking in the whole thing to see her and Naomi get that win. What was that like for you uh, to see sort of the build up to them? I just, those titles. it honestly, it meant the world to see how much that girl puts into wrestling, mm-hmm. how much love that she puts in, not just for herself, but in order to elevate other girls. Like to her, it's not, it's not just about her accomplishments. It's about bringing other girls with her so that they can collectively do this thing and change perception of what women's wrestling is. Yeah. And, you know, there was always that crux in the back of everyone's mind. Like, oh, well, she always loses at WrestleMania. She always loses all these Right. First time ever is everything, but she's lost at WrestleMania. So to finally get that monkey off her back yep. was really good. Like I, I was, I was in my brown suit. I ran down to Gorilla, <laughs> just waited, just because it's like, yeah. Oh, I love that. It's so it's it really is cool to have those moments, and you see your significant other to have to have those moments. And like as much as it's obviously it's it's their moment, and they're putting in that work, but to be along the ride with that person and getting that like seeing that moment it's it just gives me like goosebumps I mean when I've been there with John when he's had really cool moments like that it's like when he won the WWE title I'll never forget that of being like yeah. he I had no idea what was happening it did not know he was cashing in at money in the bank and Kasama one of the producers uh, at <laughs> WWE she was like it was at the main event she's like you're gonna be watching at a monitor and I was like oh, I don't know I was like busy doing something she's like you should probably go to a monitor and I was like wait what so I like run to, she took me off. <laughs> so to, like, she almost spoiled it. <laughs> I had to like run Mama. to like, but I might not have seen it if she did not give me the heads up. Cause I had no idea that it was happening, but uh, just to see that when, yeah, you kind of, you wait in gorilla for them to come back out and everybody's applauding them and to see all of the, their peers and to have Vince yeah. stand up and, and to give the, the applause. It's, it's such a cool moment. It's awesome. I love, I love those type of moments in wrestling. Like on Sunday, uh, we were, we got done show was getting over. We were packing up and getting ready to leave. We we're in the hallway. We we're walking. I'm standing by the monitor and all of a sudden I just yell. Cause you know, Terry, who's, if you guys watch hall of fame, undertaker shouted her out. She's made everything mm-hmm. undertakers ever worn. So she's been there for a long time and she's getting ready to leave. We're going. And all of a sudden I look at the camera. I'm like, Terry, Vince is in the ring. Vince is in the ring. And she comes running back and we're like, Oh, and he takes off his shirt. We're like, Oh my God, he's jacked. What the hell? It was like, it literally was a, like I was, my childhood was just coming up. I was so excited. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. That's stunner though. The stunner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I, my face 
hurt so much that I mean it was just such a great moment and you see Austin you see Austin laughing it was, yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic I was I was talking to Austin Theory yesterday and I was like dude your your stunner cell like great I, I was like dude I was like I was like that's bucket list taking a stunner and he, and he goes exactly like <laughs> as as a wrestler there are those things that you just they're in you're in the back of your mind like if I uh -huh. ever get a chance to do this and one is like taking a stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. How like, about Byron getting to get out there and take the stunner on night one? I was like, B Sacks out there just like selling like a mother. I know. And then he's like, oh yeah, I still, I I don't drink. I still taste the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. As soon as he went to take that, the, he's taking that sip of the beer. I was like, oh, here we go. He performed. He did it. Yeah. Uh, okay, your shoe that's coming out. The the train just keeps moving for you. Mania was yeah. great. What a success! But now, yeah, I mean, here we go. We're moving on. You've got another shoe dropping with Diodora. Um, yep. What what went into putting this shoe together? What's the story behind it? Uh, now knowing how much story you put into wrestlers' gears, what do you put yep. into this shoe? All right. So the shoe that we have coming out this year is the same model as the one I did last year, the N9002. And I dubbed this project Be Seen. I actually have the shoe right here. Yeah, they're beautiful. Thank you so much. And like, so I, again, just like last year, I tried to put a lot of effort into just telling a story with these shoes. So the big thing is, uh, again, last year we did like a half black, half white motif. And one of the things I learned about last year was, that white gets dirty really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So today, so this year, I wanted to go with a more of a black motif. Uh, we want to add some wild colors to it. So that's why I went with the tie dye because I love tie dye. Yeah, I love it and, too. And then, you know, uh, I tried to incorporate the uh, the infinity symbol and the puzzle piece in here because there are individuals uh, in the autistic community who connect with either or or both. Like, you know, I know some people prefer one over the other. My whole thought process behind that was, you know, you can't, you can't omit one person's story just because it doesn't align with your story. Right. So I wanted to include them both into the shoe so that Every and that's in terms of, is those are symbols for autism. Yeah. Okay. Yes, those are symbols for autism. And you know, Got some it. people like, I mean, the puzzle piece has a, has a storied history, not all good, but I I've talked to like individuals who really connect with it because, you know, growing up, they never saw that puzzle piece as a negative for them. You know, yeah. I know I, back in the day, it was always the idea that an autistic person was missing a piece. And that's why the ah. puzzle piece was, you know, synonymous with it. And like every, okay. they, a lot of individuals took that as a negative and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. You're not missing a piece. You are a fully formed individual. Mm -hmm. But as talking to a lot of in, uh, autistic people, I've met a lot of them that said, no, like that, that piece, I, it wasn't about me missing a piece. It was the final piece. What I learned about autism, when I figured out what I was like, it was like that final piece of the puzzle. Got it. You know, I talked to families and they say, you know, my autistic child they're not missing a piece. They're the final piece to this family. We would not be a family without them. And so mm -hmm. when I started hearing those stories, I was like, okay, you can't, you can't leave that out. You can't sure. disregard their, their experiences just because it doesn't align with yours. Um, one thing I really love about this is on the tongue, we wrote awareness and acceptance. Oh, that's awesome. And those things actually glow in the dark. Oh, no way. That's along awesome. With, yeah, along with the Diodora symbol on the side. So the again, the tagline for this project is be seen. And the whole idea was the autistic community, autistic individuals, they don't, they shouldn't be in the background. They shouldn't yeah. be pushed to the side. They should be front and center like everyone else. They deserve to be seen. Hell yeah. You know? And then I also, I, I didn't want to call it the token autism shoe. I didn't mm -hmm. want to be that this is the Diodora autism shoe. I was like, no, the autistic community deserves to have a cool fashionable shoe that everybody loves to wear and it happens to be for them like they, awesome. they they should be treated just like everyone else that's so but, cool um, and i think one of the biggest things that i learned from last year is this year we incorporated uh uh what is it adaptive shoelaces in here what's that so adaptive, adaptive shoelaces are actually elastic shoelaces now one thing oh. i learned one thing I learned from from Joshua, uh, Mercedes's brother, is he hates untying his shoes. 
he always just I'm with him foot. on that. Well, then you'll love this because this because of the adaptive laces, once you tie the shoe, the lace will That's awesome. Flex. That's so my he, kind of shoe. So you can just you can just slide your foot in and out without having to untie it. And I so love it was that. and it wasn't so this wasn't just about fashion, it was also about function. So yeah. smart. So smart. Yeah. How much how much did Joshua get to weigh in on the shoe? He didn't get to weigh in that much. Uh, I he just loves colors. Mm -hmm. So I literally, when I was fashioning the shoe, I just I had him in mind. I was like, what would Joshua like to wear? Yeah. So again, I, I his shoes are always filthy. So that's why I went with the the black. Mm -hmm. He loves crazy colors. He has he doesn't really care what color he's wearing. So I said, let's put all the colors on there so he can match everything. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Listen, you got to get that rainbow out there. Yeah. Have all the colors mix and match. You can pick what you want to highlight. I love that. Oh, actually, before, let me run out because we actually we're doing a shirt that goes with this, too. And I have one. In Let's the other see room. it. Let yeah, I want to see that. OK. And so uh, this shirt we actually had printed up uh, and we were in working in conjunction with this company called Spectrum Designs out of Port Washington, New York. And they're a company, they're a t-shirt printing company that specializes in hiring autistic in individuals to work in their factory. Oh, wow. And they work together with the Nicholas Center in Long Island. And the Nicholas Center is a place where they, uh, autistic individuals can go there. They can learn life skills. They can learn job skills to where one day they can eventually go out and be self-sufficient, can live on their own, can work. And then a lot of the individuals then get moved over to Spectrum Designs where Everybody gets a paying wage. They have their own work day. And they're not just doing menial pushing paperwork. They're working the presses. They're, you know, pushing everything through the heat tunnels and cutting out the, the patterns and all that. So that's it was, awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. And it was, it was, I took a tour there a couple of months ago and it was absolutely amazing. But the shirt that we're doing is like this. Oh, wow. That's so cool. And all the languages says acceptance. Is that rainbow as well? Yeah, it's, it's tie dye. It is. Or yeah. I'm like, am I seeing that right? That's awesome. It's in all different languages. Yeah. So the whole idea is again, they deserve to be seen. So I went with a very, a very simple font because I didn't want the message to be muddled. Mm -hmm. And then again, doing it with the whole, the different languages. It was no matter where you are in the world, you deserve to be seen. Recognized. You deserve to be accepted. So that's what so this whole beautiful. Thing was so how did this relationship with Diodora come about for you guys to work together and that to, for you to really be uh, using your platform to, to bring more awareness to autism? So uh, Foot Locker would do uh, projects here and there with WWE. Mm -hmm. And one day backstage, I was talking to the, the Foot Locker rep, John, and we would just talk about wrestling and whatnot. And I had mentioned to him that, you know, I used to manage a foot action when I was in, still in high school. And so we just started talking about that. And one day they had a project coming up where uh, one of their managed store managers won a contest to design a shoe and he wanted to do a wrestling shoe. He wanted to do a shoe with Sasha Banks. So he was, John was like, Hey, I can actually, uh, I think I can make that happen. So we ended up doing a, uh, a Puma shoe, a small. That run, was the gold so. one, right? No, that was, so that was Mercedes first shoe. That was the, okay. FIBA. Oh, the yes. Puma. The Puma was like a year after, and that one was a small one. We did about 60 pairs, but those sold out in like 18 minutes. I bet. So then uh, one of the things I had told uh, John, because his son is autistic, and then Mercedes' brother, Joshua, is autistic. So I mentioned that, you know, she has an autistic brother and stuff like that. So when this project with Diodora came up last year, he hit me up and was like, hey, you want to take a crack at designing the shoe? Because you wow. have a, a connection with autism. I was, like, I was like, yeah, hell yeah. Like, I'm a sneakerhead, and you're giving me a chance. Like, let's, I'm game. Let's yeah. go. And last year's project went like gangbusters it sold out it was amazing we only did like a 200 pair run so this year we're coming back with you know maybe like 10 times more that's 10, 20 times more wow good for yeah. you that's awesome yeah and the goal the whole the goal is if this project goes great again then again we come back next year with an even bigger project yes. that we can encapsulate more charities like uh because of this project this year we're actually donating twenty five thousand dollars to the flutie foundation so uh, as a Canadian, wow. Doug Flutie. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, represent. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, so we're doing that. And it's just the Flutie Foundation has been an amazing partner for, for just the resources they've have given me. Um, I've 
this year I went and ran their 5k and I plan on doing that every year. And they've just, where do they do that? Uh, they do it up in Natick, Massachusetts. Okay. Because he is he is a, a you know a former patriot, uh-huh. so I had to go up there and be like, I had to represent you know the base. <laughs> thing. But yeah, so uh, yeah, they've been an amazing, amazing partner, and we actually, with all this going on, the one really, really cool thing we're doing is uh, we have this autistic individual named Ben Rosloff, and he's lives in Long, Long Island amazing amazing kid and he's actually shot a documentary for the creation of this shoe for the creation of the shirt and he's, he shot it he edited it himself he's doing all these animations and graphics for it and it's going to get released i think the day before the shoe drop which is you know i'll let it out right now the shoe comes out april 13th Woo! footlocker.com champsports.com and again this is bucket list in Foot Locker stores. That's so you can actually awesome. go into a store and pick it up. That's so cool. Dude, you're crushing it. Like crushing it with the cause. It's so cool. I'm so like proud of you and happy for you that you've been able to like take this opportunity and it just keeps growing and there's so much good behind it. Well, I mean, like my whole goal with this, and this is like, again, this is getting released in April during Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month. But my whole goal is to give something to the autistic community that can spark a conversation so that we can talk about autism throughout the whole year, not yeah. just during this month. Mm-hmm. So like, I, it's just one of those things where I hate when, you know, it's, everything is front and center and everybody, you know, they, they pull out all their decorations and for the month they're you know, spewing all this. Hey, we, we accept this. We accept that. This is what we're doing. And then after once May 1st hits, it all goes back in the closet. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. This, yeah. Wear this all years. Keep that conversation going. Absolutely. Keep the conversation going. So April 13th, April the 13th. shoe is dropping. Footlocker.com. Footlocker.com champsports.com. Champs.com. And in Foot Lockers and Champ Sports stores. Booyaka. Hell yeah. Oh my God, dude. If you live in Orlando, go to the Florida mall because they will be available at the Florida mall Foot Locker. Are you going to do, I I mean, obviously you're going to have to like go there and see this and like soak that whole thing in. That's, that's massive. Yeah. Yeah, That's literally, it's on my bucket list. I'm I'm going there and yeah, I might cry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so hopefully, know, hopefully right? someone is there to, to give me a shoulder to lean on but i might cry because it's not 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 just the fact that i have my own shoe on a wall in Foot Locker, but the fact that it it just it means a lot to me what the mm-hmm. cause is yeah. and it just to have this shoe sit up there with a jordan or something like that and be like no like if this is a, this is a dope shoe it's a comfortable shoe it's not yeah. just the token autism shoe with the bell crow that okay let's just slap it together because they need something to wear no sure. it's gonna we're gonna rival all the other shoes with this autistic shoe or with this autism shoe because they deserve it just as much yeah there i mean just with like the thought put into it and like the style aspect it, you really checked off all of the boxes and yeah i mean it's one of those shoes you're gonna see it on a wall and it's gonna stand out and and it's cool for somebody to like maybe not even know what the shoe is about and then for them to pick it up and learn and spark that conversation. Exactly. I want, I want someone to pick it up, whether they're supporting autism or pick it up because it's an awesome shoe because mm-hmm. they may grab the shoe because they love tie dye and it yeah. goes great with their outfits. And then they're walking and someone goes, Oh, Hey, that's an autism shoe. And yeah. then now all of a sudden it just, it puts that thought into the person's mind. Now they yeah. might not know anything about autism and they might go research. Like, what is this? Yeah. 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 So cool. Very happy for you. Congratulations. You. That's, Thank that's you. fantastic. Uh, your podcast. What's up with your podcast, dude? So uh, I had one idea that I was going to do a while ago, but like, again, with our business or this business, <laughs> it's, it's so nutty that like trying to put the time together to, to put that together, just, wasn't happening yet i'm still going to do yeah. that one but my second yeah. one is called the movie therapy oh, it's, it's Surat and chris's movie therapy podcast it's me and my best friend chris who he he lives in the woods in alabama uh we actually met at the uh the ice cream factory hell yeah you know, he, he's essentially he's my fourth brother and we go online and we just will find random movies to stream like the rule is you can't have 
watch the trailer and you can't have seen the movie before. It's just, it's very random. Okay. We, we, someone picks it, we watch it, we talk about the movies and then we try to pick lessons from the movies and apply them to life. Oh. And see how like, you know, okay, in this scenario, this person did this, how would you, how would you react in that situation? And then it just sparks a conversation about like, you know, it just, it's almost like just therapy, just getting out like, how you would react in certain situations or how your mind thinks about certain cool. situations. And it's sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to put yourself in that mindset when you're only reflecting on your own life, but mm-hmm. again, watching a movie and you see, you know, Batman, you know, s- trying to sacrifice himself to save Superman. You're like, what would, like, what would cause you or what's something, what, who's in your life would you do that for? Yeah. Like, and how, like, and why? And then that just sparks a conversation about like relationships with people. Oh, that's really cool. That's yeah. how thoughtful is this guy? You, you're really checking it all off. That's so cool. What's the best movie that you've seen uh, in the last, I'll say, month? Well, I did see opening night. I saw the new Batman. I've not seen and, it yet. Ah! Really? I uh, haven't. I'm, I know. Okay. I, 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 I might say that might be my favorite Batman movie. And this is as someone who loves the dark Knight, but that's because I'm a comic book fiend. And this really feels like the closest to a Batman comic. Okay. Okay. I can respect that. Robert Pattinson kills it. Zoe Kravitz is sexy as hell. Like it's just, that woman can do no wrong. Take all of my money. I don't like what an angel on earth she is. Good God. Oh, as far as best movie, I did rewatch Coco and uh, Soul mm. recently. Soul oh. beautiful. Yeah. So is Coco, um, but Soul yeah. really was like, ooh, tugs on the old heartstrings. God, I should rewatch I, that. I'm, I'm very big on just, you know, like thoughtfulness mm-hmm. and, and graciousness. Yeah, clearly. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, it just speaks to me. Like, I always feel like if you're going to do something, just be thoughtful about it. Yeah. You, don't, don't, you don't need to be selfish about everything i mean be selfish do something for yourself but at the same time like don't be a dick just be thoughtful if there's ever been a way to end an episode of a show it was with that hell yeah what a tagline don't yeah don't be a dick man (laughs) just think think about other people sometimes uh well so thank you so much for coming on the show again it's great to just see your face and hear your voice and get to hang out with you but also get to talk about your mania week and putting together all these crazy looks and your new show with the new shoe with Deodora dropping April 13th, footlocker.com, champsports.com in the store, get out there, be a part of it. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm just stoked for you. 